Uh, recordings of my family. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, so this is my oh, last yeah. my last story time talk as a student. I, <laughs> I hope we're going to find out. Um, and these are the things. I always put my favorite uh, equation at the bottom of my title slide because I think it's important. Sure. This is about a lot of, or a handful of different things, so I didn't really give it a subject matter title. Um, Ben Hamin breaks us, Emery, that's my full name, if you, yeah, don't wear it out. Um, okay, so I remember when Andy Reagan used to give yeah, talks, yeah. he used to have this timeline thing, so I wanted to do something kind of similar, so this title is just called Life. <laughs> and uh, we have a time axis here, or as, as Kurt Vonnegut would call it, a BE axis. B stands for beginning, and E stands for electricity. Um, and... <laughs> Yeah, so this starts sometime in the summer. Uh, this is just going to be like a handful of things that happened because it's been kind of an eventful stuff, eventful semester, beginning of the semester. So <laughs> this is my Strava calendar. I started riding a lot more than I, I I've always ridden bikes a lot, but I started like really riding bikes. Like you could find me between 7 and 8 a.m. every single morning, like pounding up a hill trying to make myself puke. Because uh, yeah, like, that's the type of pain that I felt like I deserved or something. Um, <laughs> And so, September, I started teaching my last class at UVM. Um, it was Math 17, which on the registrar is uh, Applications of Finite Mathematics, which I think is wrong. <laughs> it's just so boring sounding. So I called it MINS, which stands for Mathematics in Nature and Society. And it was just kind of like a really a non-math person's, sorry, air quotes, um, math course where this will be fun, it'll be difficult, um, you'll be like on the verge of crying but then you'll figure it out. Um, and I did it fully flipped so I did all my lectures underneath a camera and then we spent every class period doing practice problems for that. Made a Twitter account for it, just kind of went f just full send on this thing. Um, and I think the final product was um, something that I was really proud of. I definitely learned a lot from it but we'll continue that. Oh, and then I like won the collegiate mountain bike season in the East somehow. <laughs> I guess like probably had to do with the pukiness earlier. Um, but yeah, that, that was exciting. And then I went to nationals and tried to race my bike in Montana, uh, but it was destroyed in the fire. Um, the quick rundown of this is that we shipped our bikes to, um, to Montana and then the FedEx truck that was carrying them caught on fire, and most of our bikes were destroyed. You have heard a lot about this already. Um, and then Trek, we reached out to Trek, and Trek sent us new bikes to use for the weekend. Um, so this is me racing. Um, you can't really tell, but I'm wearing a tutu, just like for funsies. Um, and my skin suit was in the box with my bike, so it's got the burn marks on it. Um, and I'm next to, I'm next to the previous years national champion. I was not next to him for very long, but <laughs> it happened for a second. It's definitely a smoky... Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, 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 it smells. It smells. Flavor around for, for gloves uh, and things months. for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, so we had our final exam in MINS. That was exciting. I put a question on it. Question seven was, imagine a spherical cow. Um, just like imagine it. Like you've worked hard for a while. Just like take a break and <laughs> consider a spherical cow. And there was no requirement to draw it, but a bunch of them actually drew it, so I was really happy about that. Um, so, yeah, a little montage there. Um, went to the Complex Networks Winter Workshop, which was basically the best thing in the world. This is a link, actually, to the most important part of all this. Let's see if it works. Uh, yes, allow. This is okay, you can do this. Um, so there's this thing that happens in Quebec that would never be allowed in the United States, this is Sledding Hill, um, where they carve out tracks, they, or they have these, these concrete tracks with ice, and we didn't sign anything to do this. We just went and did it, um, a bunch of professors and students, and Sam Scarpino was on a conference call with his headphones on while doing this, which is really? legendary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he was. So this is the St. Lawrence here on the right. Yes, and yes. This is a massive river here, and the, the front of neck is this amazing castle-like hotel. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. ridiculous thing. Yeah. And we yeah. stayed in this beautiful monastery 
Yeah, you should go to this. So, uh, yeah. well, if you, you should do anything you poss- anything, everything in your power to go to this next year. If you... Wait, when was this? this? In, like, right after school ended in the fall. So it looks in, like we'll in December. December. I was there and I didn't know it. <laughs> yeah. I okay. went to visit family. Can, can really? I just, can I just say something about it? So, yeah. so it looks like we'll be able to do this every year. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the plan. Uh, it was make sure you get time. time. Okay, so and Alan went. Was Alan here? I don't think yeah, a few people went from yeah. here. Uh, Ryan Gallagher was there with because it's, yeah. it's actually with us. It's and with Laval and with Northern North Eastern. Eastern. Yeah, with the mm-hmm. network Good science thing. Um, so, but it should be. It's going to be about networks every year, and they have a hundred or hundred twenty million dollar uh, grant from the Canadian government to study. It's called Sentinel North to study the North in every possible way. And it's, I think it's just for Laval, right? It's all lots of money. So they are, you know, able to do really nice things. We put yeah. up some money too. But the monastery is beautiful, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll do it again. So we piled four people onto this toboggan: is Laurent uh, and Kelly and Sam Rosenblatt and myself. Um, and I was watching people come through this on the way up, and it seemed pretty benign. It is. Nice. So <laughs> we got we got to the top of this thing, mm-hmm. and the guy running the show at the top, he said. All right, don't worry. I'm going to give you the instructions in French, and then you'll hear them in English. And he talked in French for about five minutes and then said, the English version is that everything will be fine. (laughs) Um, And then he dropped the gate, and you'll see me do something that it turns out I really shouldn't have done. Are we ready? Yeah! Three, two, one! This, this bobsled start. (laughs) Um... So we're immediately, like, way beating everybody else. Um, and starting going really fast, Laurent gets scared and he drops the camera. Um, and then... He's, yeah, we're all, like, rocking back and forth. I'm really concerned. And then this thing... We didn't see anybody else even touch this snowbank. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Laurent, like, dove off of the sled to like, keep us from going over it. It was amazing. Um... There's, there's rubber to slow you down. Or there's rubber. There's yeah. So yeah, this is another. Fly over it. it didn't yeah. work. The front of the Which... sled lifted off of the. <laughs> well played by you. In this one. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. So this is the same run. We're on the. We're we're over here. <laughs> it's clear where we are. It's clear where we are. Um, it starts to become clear just how out of control this whole thing is when we get closer. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Okay, so this thing, it's its its really a wonderful conference. Um, you'll do a lot of work. <laughs> Is that thing free, or you pay? Um, $3. You know, <laughs> we didn't pay. It, it depends on the, the strings that you pull and stuff. I did a lot of talking with Scarpino them about the market. Right? Scarpino paid? Someone paid. Oh, the toboggan. Oh, the toboggan, yeah, the toboggan thing. The toboggan thing cost money, but, uh, yeah, they... I think they just paid for all of us. They were like, we're, we got to so do this So it's a thing. school, I should also, it's a school, so there are lectures start with and then mm-hmm. projects and you work on projects. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You do you do a big project in two days and it yeah. totally consumes you and it's great. Um, oh yeah, and then my paper, not my paper, I'm the second author on it, but uh, our paper, my paper with Meredith Niles from the Food Systems Department and Chris and Peter um, and Andy Reagan was accepted to PLOS One, so that's going to appear in February, and I'm going to talk about that next. Yeah, it's exciting. It's fun. Um, okay, so previously in story time with Ben Emery. Um, I'm going to just quickly run through my contributions to that paper that was published, um, and I'm not going to spend too much time. I'm not going to spend really any time talking about the stuff before that. Um, but we studied five major natural hazard uh, crisis events in the U.S., and these words are just handpicked um, as kind of keywords that we think might indicate that somebody is talking about a natural disaster, and then pulled out all the usernames who tweeted these keywords during a certain time period, and then just used those as likely users. Um, and then from there, uh, what I the first thing that I did was plot the follower distributions for each of these. So this is Hurricane Irene, Hurricane Sandy, um, a 
what was this one? This was flood, a uh, major flood in Louisiana, and then, and then two separate tornado events that happened in different places, different times. Um, and something that I thought was interesting about this, there's not too much to say about it, other than it's like sort of power law E maybe, not really. Um, is that the hurricanes? The hurricanes have this shelf, and something that I think could contribute to that is possibly that um, you can predict. Um, is that a hurricane is much more predictable? I guess flooding is pretty predictable too, but tornadoes are kind of their own thing. So I don't know. I don't have that much to say about that. And then the last thing that happened on my previous talk was I had this heat map thing, which is just a, um, it's a representation of, you can imagine that there's a scatter plot, but there are just way too many points to, point, to plot a normal scatter plot. So instead we do this heat map where the color of each, block represents the number of points that would be there. And this is on a log-log uh, scale, so it's the y-axis is the fractional change in tweet rate um, between the time before Hurricane Sandy, the month before Hurricane Sandy, and then during Hurricane Sandy. So you take the ratio of the tweet rate from before and after, or before and during, and then we put that on a log scale here and then log followers, so this is a glog scale. I'm gonna keep repeating this until it becomes a thing. Um, the word blog is a contraction of web log, so I think it logically follows that a log log scale can be reasonably referred to as just a glog scale. So, important. Um, the other thing to note is that the color map is actually on a log scale too, so we're just like building a cabin with all these logs. Um, <laughs> But the next thing, so, so what, what I was saying, what I was trying to assert last time is that um, we see that it's, first of all, it, it is definitely skewed towards an increase, but there is more of an increase in kind of this area of people with less than 10 to the 2, 100 followers. Um, and so that, and which is consistent with this Dunbar number where that's like, close to the maximum number of people that you can keep a meaningful relationship with. And so these are people who have meaningful relationships with their followers. Um, but there was more to do here, so I was in the process of pulling out um, analogous pairs of time periods to this one that did not coincide with a major, um, a major crisis of any kind, and then try to plot the same figure and see what it looks like. And so that's what this is. And I would say that these are different. This one's much more symmetric, and it doesn't have the blob over here as much. Um, it actually is a little bit shifted upward, which I think is an artifact of the, um, the time, the spacing of the time periods that I used. The before time period was actually longer than the during time period for this. So I think that had an effect with this. I would say looks different, and the next plot, I think, will help with that argument. But does anyone have any questions about this so far? I don't want to lose anybody, because this is a lot of kind of a lot of stuff going on. Okay, so uh, I present to you the Grinch plot. It's actually so these are violin plots, but I chose green because it made them look like the Grinch. And so this is that same idea. We have log fractional change in tweet rate. This is again. This is Sandy. And this is the that null distribution that I um, used by that I generated by pulling random, not random, but um, pulling a bunch of different pairs of time periods. And each of these is just people with uh, a certain order of magnitude of follower counts. So these are people with um, ten or less, a hundred or less, or a hundred to one thousand, one thousand to ten thousand so on. And these bars that you see are 95% um, 95% confidence Bayesian intervals are for the mean of this distribution. And what we see here is that these ones are actually, they don't overlap with any of the higher um, follower count ones. And that's not true for the null distribution. So I think that this is a significant, although a small effect, 
Um, and so that was kind of, I think, the most interesting finding of this whole thing. Um, so next we had to deal with this title struggle because the original version of the paper was, um, it was titled, the average individuals tweet more often during extreme events, an ideal mechanism for social contagion because it's consistent with literature that says that social contagion is mostly driven by um, hidden influentials and not necessarily highly connected individuals, all this stuff. Um, and so while we don't really look at social contagion, we say that this um, is consistent with other um, examples like that. Uh, and then this happened, this tweet has actually uh, been deleted, but it says, when I read a new study, I try to ask me, <laughs> thinks he's so clever, um, would this be more interesting if the finding were the opposite? If so, why publish this finding? So I want to say that, so that's a, that is a thing that we confront over and over again, especially about social phenomena, mm -hmm. is that you can, things that are obvious, well, you know you're doing something right when people respond with, this is obvious, or this makes no sense. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. so you get, you'll get people saying the same thing, those things yeah. about the same thing. Uh, so first of all, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sure, what's going on? Mm. You realize you've got some sort of interesting point there. Um, but also, there are pieces where, yeah, you know which way it's going to go. Or you mm. know. It, yeah, it, sure, it, but it's still worth your common sense. But you need to quantify it. Mm. Yep, yep. And here it's not much, actually. It could be a lot right. more, and we'd be like, oh, that makes sense, too. Yeah. Because we're going to make up stories for things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is terrible. Who is this? I don't know. Clown? <laughs> I had to take the screenshot from Slack because the tweet's gone. Um, okay, so then we tried. Okay, we need a we need a better title. The Something. things I just said are very hard, sort of for for knowledge, right? Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's an issue with science. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so maybe we need a better title. Something that describes what we're trying to say a little bit more. So what? Like during natural disasters, <laughs> <laughs> average individuals are not highly connected. In, Users tweet relatively more often, uh, reflective of social contagion. I remember this. We have this thing, right? <laughs> During natural disasters, average individuals tweet relatively more often than very well connected users, but we don't mean more in total, just relatively right. Does that make sense? <laughs> uh, and then we were just like, screw it. We'll call it social media trends during natural hazards. <laughs> Which is the sort of thing you put when you don't have a really powerful thing to say. You'll just, yeah. Uh, it's okay. Just it's just contribution to the yeah. topic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's. Yes, Peter. Why natural hazards? I mean, I understand uh -huh. like the, the idea here, but you were looking at five relatively major events, mm -hmm. and a natural hazard could have been something such as just right. like um, us. A snowstorm in Atlanta that drops two inches is a natural hazard for Atlanta. <laughs> yes. They would die if they had what happened on Saturday. Yes. Yeah. So, like, regionally, things happen differently, but mm -hmm. a tornado is a major hazard. Yes. A rainstorm is a natural hazard that could raise floodwaters a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, uh, these were events, right, that really... Yeah, these are major events. These okay. Were, yeah, it's it's... The natural hazard versus disaster argument is like kind of a semantic thing that okay. we, we didn't say the words natural hazard at any point in the original submission. And then we got comments saying like this, saying this phrase is being phased out of literature because of things um, I don't fully understand. But yeah, what was okay. that? Um, it seemed like a good framing. This seems to soften it all up. Yeah. Um, like it's... Yeah. Maybe it has to do with the defunding of the EPA. Yeah, I mean, it feels like there's a, no, this feels like a misframing. Mm -hmm. This feels like a double screen. Yeah. It probably is. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a good answer for that, but I mean, it's like just that, kind that of the stuff where we're like... It seems like softer. It's very soft. It's weirdly soft for a events. huge hurricane. Yeah. Okay. But, by the way, in terms of science, disaster is a great word, right? Because it's a mm -hmm. I mean, bad star. <laughs> bad right? star. Yeah, disaster. It's, it's an astrological explanation for... Oh, happen. that's right. Yeah. This aster. Quite beautiful. That is quite beautiful. Well, yeah, that has kind of a cosmic yeah. feel to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, why did it happen? The yeah, bad stuff. So, right, it links back to astrology. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Things line up the wrong way. Yeah, of course. Just call that. During bad stars. Bad stars. <laughs> during. <laughs> well, we'll someone, tell you your horoscopes during this. Yeah, you know, like they're actual. Yeah. Mm. So we're kind of okay. more into the causal explanation. Cool. Uh, okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my family now. 
um, and then we'll move into new stuff that I'm working on. Um, so I had my mom's side of the family come up for Christmas this year. Um, they're all from Puerto Rico. They live in Puerto Rico. Um, and so this, these are my two cousins and then my aunt and uncle are on the end here. And getting them out into this part of the lake took like an hour. Um, but, and then we ambushed someone and made them take this picture for us. Um, but they lived through Hurricane Maria and it hit really hard. So these are pictures of, these are pictures of the lines that my uncle had to wait in um, for both food and gas. So we've got people sitting under their umbrellas in the extreme heat and bringing their coolers uh, to go pick up food and then everyone's got their gas cans and these are both just hours long um, waits for this stuff. Another, and my cousin took this photo and I'm actually really impressed by it. It's like really artistic, um, but of like this impassable road because the, the flooding has, um, has just gotten so bad. And this is actually after uh, quite a large amount of drainage from the original, um, the original amount of water that was there. And this is from a newspaper somewhere, so it's, um, but I, <coughs> this is a good, a solid picture of the devastation that occurred there. Um, and I said this last time, but this, um, this event had a really strong impact on myself and how I see myself because I am one half Puerto Rican, um, but it's been very difficult previously in my life to claim that as part of my identity because I appear completely white, I don't speak Spanish well, um, and I can dance pretty well, but that doesn't really come up that often. <laughs> uh, but this is like, yeah, this, I, this is a thing, this is part of my identity, this is affecting me more personally than the people I see around. Um, and so I want to, I, I, I want to make that part of my identity. And this is, this, the death toll is now at um, about 3,000, and um, is the official count, which is exactly the same as 9-11. Not that there's any reason to compare those things, it's definitely not a competition, but it does seem that, um, that when there isn't a boogeyman, there's no Al-Qaeda to blame for this. If anything, it's just ourselves and climate change and nature, and when we don't have that boogeyman, it does seem like we would rather forget. Um, so, okay, yeah, so, so I spent a lot of time over the last semester thinking about what kind of project I could do with Puerto Rico regarding this, um, this event, because it seems like something, it, seem, it seems like a really important case study to look at, and I had a lot of trouble thinking about exactly what to do until the Complex Networks Winter Workshop. And I saw a talk um, by Brooke Foucault-Wells, who is a um, professor of communications at Northeastern, but she has one foot in the Network Science Institute. <coughs> and she's the advisor for Ryan Gallagher, who's an alumnus of this group here. Um, and she talked about the work that she does with hashtag activism. So this is just one really good example of what she does, and so I'm going to go through that and then talk about how I employ, how I've been um, implementing the same type of uh, techniques for what I did. So this is the hijacking of the hashtag MyNYPD, and so this is a specific study about this thing that happened on Twitter where the New York Police Department tweeted out, um, you know, do you have a photo with a member of the NYPD? Like, if so, tag it and maybe we'll put it on our Facebook and it'll be cute and stuff. Um, and this is what happened immediately <laughs> after. So here the NYPD engages with its community members, changing hearts and minds one baton at a time. Um, yeah, it was really, really intense. So there were way, way more of these than the type of posts that they were looking at. Um, yeah, and then, so what, um, what Professor Foucault-Wells did was she took 
all the people who tweeted with this hashtag during the um. What is that? That's amazing. <laughs> I was wondering that. Like, <laughs> that's amazing. I don't know. Is it a real <laughs> ass? Or is that a fake ass? Yeah. <laughs> In front of TV Bank too. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> wow. Tiny. Okay. Yeah. And they look so <laughs> smug. I think that's the way you should advertise in the modern age. Yeah, I that's know, actually really so close. Uh, yeah, I guess if you're on Wall Street, you can have a better So, so every, so what, oh, um, fake, what professor, fake, fake ads. oh, what is it? By Cinemax, so fake ads. Fake ads. Oh, fake ads, okay, oh, okay, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Okay. It looked like a fake ad. It's like, there's no way. Um, the television drama Hunted, which of course has gone into the, that's um, awesome. Canon is one of the most famous shows, that, no, I don't know what that is, Hunted, no? Anyway. No, no idea. A little bit of a waste of money, though, mm. but anyway, okay. <laughs> Um, right, so every user becomes a node who um, tweeted with that hashtag during this period of time. And then the tweets that either retweet someone else um, or at mention another person becomes a link. And so that's something, and she did this all with the, gar or with the garden hose, which is the same um, database that we have flowing into our back at all times. Um, and so... I wanted to do something similar to this, uh, but regarding Puerto Rico. So what I first did is I went into our GeoTweets box, which is on the back. If you need help accessing it, I can show you where it is because it's not super obvious. I had to find this really old conversation somewhere in the Slack to figure out where it was. Um, but I drew a little rectangle around Puerto Rico, and I pulled out all the accounts that tweeted from Puerto Rico exactly during the hurricane happening. Um, and the reason that I didn't extend it further is because I wanted to avoid the news outlets that traveled to the island um, in the aftermath or possibly in the anticipation because I wanted people that were really affected by this. Um, and then I went into Twitter's free API and I actually had to make two separate accounts because I ran out of requests in my first one while I was debugging, and then I just made a new one using my class, my class Twitter account, and they didn't question it. They were just like, here's your free account, new person that we've never seen before. And I was like, thank you. It would literally take a human about three seconds to figure out that those two accounts were from the same person. Uh, but anyway, I pulled all the accounts that at mentioned or retweeted any of those people anytime between September 16th and October 16th, 2017. Um, and then from there, I went into the garden hose because at that point I had really run out of API requests for the last time. I went into the garden hose and for the same time period pulled out all tweets that both were authored by an account in this big list, the list that I made from both of these two things put together, um, and either at mentioned an account or retweeted an account also from that list. And so each of those tweets constitutes a link in this network that I'm about to draw. And so this is what that network looks like now. The size is proportional to the in degree um, of the network, and the, they're colored based on algorithmically detected communities. Peter. So, sorry for, uh, just, uh, so this is everybody who uh, yeah. has an at, mentions somebody else, and use those word, uh, those like key phrases. No, okay, thing. yeah, so sorry, this is different from the key phrases thing. Okay. Totally different, yeah, so this is, um, every node in this is either someone who tweeted from Puerto Rico during the hurricane. Okay, so it's a location. Now. Locationally, okay. yeah, during the hurricane. Or interacted with one of those people any time in that month-long period. Okay, okay, yep. Um, so it's, it, it's at the end of... No, when is it? It's at the, the end hurricane? of... The it's September? September 20th. Right. Yeah. <coughs> and so, so this, is, this is a little bit... The time period is a little bit of anticipation event and, and then, then a solid amount of, okay. um, of aftermath. Yeah. Um, and so this is as close as I've been able to get to a good proxy for the real Puerto Rico Twitter um, communication network. And so 
just some obligatory things that I have to do when I put a network on the screen is uh, plot the in degree versus um, plot the in degree distribution. And so this is the log of the number of nodes that have an in degree and then the log of that in degree. I won't call it a power law because fans of Pox know that a power law is a good one if it spans three orders of magnitude um, on both axes. This definitely doesn't. Uh, there's just not enough data. So I won't say that directly, but it kind of looks like one. It's got a heavy tail. It's got a heavy tail. Yeah. Um, OK, yeah, and the next thing I did was I just separated it out by date and made a new network. And so these, I know that this is like kind of a big pile of spaghetti. Um, but what this, each of these lines is a person who was in the top five of a network on any, on any of the days in this 30 day period for in degree. So what I did is I made the network for every, made the network for every individual day, took the tie, took the five top nodes for in degree of each day and put them in a list of people. And then I plotted their in degree as a function of time. And then this legend would be way too long if it included everybody, but it, so it just includes the top five for the entire network there. Um, there's more to do with this, but I just wanted to put it on the screen because, you know, time series, we like it. Um, okay, and then the last, the last bit that I did was this information theoretic NLP stuff. And so here, I took all the tweets from, in my network, all the tweets in my network from before Hurricane Maria and then after, and I broke them up, took out the stop words, all the good stuff that you're supposed to do, the Spanish and the English stop words. And then I did, I computed the Jensen-Shannon divergence, which is this thing. And I'm not going to say too much about it, except for that it's an information theoretic measurement of the difference between two core by. And so we have, and, and it's also, you can break it down by the contribution of each word. So it's just, a, it's just a sum of contributions from every word. And so here I have the top 20 individual word contributors to the total Jensen-Shannon divergence between the corpus before Hurricane Maria and the corpus after, and which is 0.43 bits, roughly. Um, and the direction that they point in just shows you whether they were more common in the before corpus or the after corpus. So this is fundamentally different from the word shifts that you're used to seeing on the hedonometer because um, the overall measurement in the hedonometer comes from a tipping of the scale. But this is really more, the central measurement here is really the spread of this thing. So yeah, the direction doesn't mean quite as much in this. Where do you think the four and the 21 came from? So the four is definitely from it being downgraded from a category four to five, oh, four, five to four. And 21 is the date? I think 21 is a date, yeah, because um, the hurricane did make landfall on the 20th, uh -huh. and I think it fully passed over by the 21st. And so that could be what this is. I have no idea what this is. I meant to, to look into that, but is that like a study? it totally could be. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the other thing that I have to the other thing that I have to explain about this is the color map. So for each of these words, I took the body of tweets that mentioned that word, and I computed the Shannon entropy of that corpus. So Shannon entropy is a measurement of diversity of corpus. Um, and so what this tells you is that the, what, what this essentially ends up saying is that the more colored one of these bars is, the more diverse the set of tweets was that mentioned that word. And then if one of them is completely white, that probably means that it was only used in retweets of the same tweet. Yeah. Uh, do you have a question, Peter? Oh, uh, Sheikh Jalala is a person. Oh, okay. And the interesting thing is that I'm pretty sure it comes from one of the other 
nodes that you had in the first one, which was uh, Zacky Zacky something. Oh which my is god! Also a person. I did look at that. Okay, yeah. So I I looked at the I looked at the Zack Zacky thing because he's like, um, a Shiite or, a sh like a Shiite scholar. Yeah, I just looked it up. Who was it's, imprisoned? It's a, it's a Twitter handle. What's it's Twitter Sheikh Twitter? Jalala, and he tweeted at Zacky Zacky, which is so yeah. And the connection to. So that's Puerto Rico though is. That guy. Yeah, so this, these accounts, this is a totally separate thing. They aren't in Puerto Rico, but apparently one, both, yeah, apparently both of these nodes um, interacted with a Puerto Rico node. Okay. During the time. And so there will be, yeah, there will be instances of other things showing up in this. Throughout. And we'll see that in some of the other shifts too. You got more to show because that shift is interesting. I, I mean, I wonder about mm -hmm. it. like the. You would think the hashtag on the bottom might have some right, diversity and this is diversity around it though. You would think. Maybe. You would think, but also the time period. So this is a much smaller corpus. So what are, what are the actual times? What, what are the what are each corpus? What, what are it, the, so the before is corpus is the sixteenth through the nineteenth. Okay. And the after corpus is the 21st through the 16th. We missed the day in the middle. Right? Missed the day in the middle, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. I'm very surprised that you don't see any hashtag like support, help, contribute, stuff like that. Yeah. Because usually after like a right. like okay. this, everybody's seeking for help, especially like the major mm -hmm. TV shows and stuff like that. They're like, for help. And right, yeah, and I think. And further down? Yeah, I think those, those, I'm sure those exist, and I think that they would be more prominent if this included um, accounts from mainland U.S. And, but this is, the, the accounts that make up this corpus are mostly ones with kind of these personal connections, which, again, they are probably reaching out to, but... I think that that would be... Yeah. So the hashtag element is really important, right? I mean, mm -hmm. once, uh, if, if something gets organized, then a hashtag gets built, right? Yeah. And, and they usually tell little stories within them. Yeah. Right. Just this one just says the, this just says the event. Right. And years ago, when we were first trying to do story find or story ring, we did mm -hmm. Jake Williams working on Boston Marathon, and you could, the, the phrase that popped up was the Boston Marathon bombing, right? So there was mm -hmm. that. And then it was thoughts and prayers. Yeah. And then send donations. Well, exactly like you say. But they weren't hashtags. But I we really expect to and in some ways the hashtag it, it suggest, you know shows that there's been organization. Mm. Right. Yeah. It's pretty powerful. So right. You can also just look at hashtags. Yeah, and, and oh okay, yeah. So just Yeah, what's the hashtag <coughs> the ha OG. Right. Hashtag shift. <laughs> um so here's the next thing that I did was I did the same JSD shift but for different components of the network. So this is that big central component that had that, that one biggest node in it. I took the tweets from that and then did the same thing. Emojis are pretty hard to work with because- Is that a camera? It's a camera, yeah. It's a movie camera. It's a movie is camera. that a TV station? Uni no, is this one? Yeah, that's a- Yeah, yeah, uni yeah, yeah, this is, this is like a Latin news <coughs> outlet. Gotcha. So that's the thing here is that because this account and a couple of related accounts just tweet out um, various news that has to do with just Latin America as a whole, uh -huh. you see them talking about Mexico and earthquakes and seismic, seismic. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Um, more often than other people. And then we've got Shikala again. <laughs> so this is something interesting, but I'm not totally sure what's going on there. Um, yeah, and then, again, this is another, another component that was in the network, and emojis still being a nightmare, <laughs> because the corpus is separated on spaces, this, this string of three, um, of three emojis with no spaces in between them gets counted as a single token, and so that's something that I need to fix, uh, but there's stuff going on here that I have not had that what much time we, to look into. What do we think? Should split them up? Yes. Uh, so, um, so like, 
When I look at that, I imagine that there's only, say, one instance of that. And that, so there's like a word that has very little support that's mm -hmm. having a, is showing up. Because if, you know, there's no instances in one case and one instance mm -hmm. in, in the other. I am pretty surprised. Yeah. Would that be right? or? or well, that would show up in the, if that were true, the bar would be white. Okay. Because, actually, no. I think you need to add, so this is a problem with it. You need to add another little piece of, a signifying piece of information which says this is, you know, th this word or term only appears in this corpus. Like, because it can be, the, the word appears in both, but it's you know, much stronger in this one. Mm -hmm. Or it could simply be that it's a word that doesn't appear on the other corpus. And that's a important thing to, which I think is. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, like, like if it occurs zero times here and. and uh -huh. You know, a hundred times here, or yep. you know, ten times here, and a hundred times here. You know, those those are like the four or like zero and one. Those mm -hmm. are like very. Yeah. No, that's a good things. point. Yeah, I need to figure out a way to. Yeah, we can talk about that. We can talk about that. You can go really crazy. Okay. This is a set. This is a, an example of just full scale hijacking. So most of these are about the protest movements in Venezuela, and so. That's just, this person ended up in the network. I actually had to do a lot of work to keep the network from being fully Venezuela-centric, and that was surprising. What is going on with Venezuela? Okay, so Venice, we've mm. just been doing this thing where we're looking at the median uh, rank for countries, mm -hmm. right, to, to create a sort of like a measurement scale of sorts, right? Yeah. So Vanuatu is ranked usually around a, a million. Yeah. This is so we can kind of. You know, compare other places, right? The U.S. is usually sorry. America is like nine hundred or something, like ranked for each for any day if you rank worse, right? Yeah. Uh, but Venezuela is like six or seven. They're they're leveraging Twitter a lot. I mean, what? Yeah, and it's been going for a long time. If you go back ten years, they get their ne network set up as an audience. Mm -hmm. This is weird. But yeah. The word Venezuela just appears uh, mm -hmm. really Venezuela, seems like disproportionately easy LA. Yeah, um, incredibly high. Yeah. More than England? Lots of, yeah. I'm convinced it's the political meme nature of it. Like whenever you bring up higher taxes or single payer health care, people say, what about Venezuela? That's my theory. Well, well, we have to get all of Venezuela if we can. It could yeah. also be the amount of people that like, left and then they appear randomly mm -hmm. everywhere because they just take refuge anywhere that there's other people. Yeah, so. that's very true. It was, it was higher ranked than Mexico last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that seems really weird. Maybe okay. Um, they build a bigger. No, and it's absolutely true. But a lot of places do, and it's just like, they're you know, they're fighting against all of the empty. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, we'll, we'll deal with Venezuela. One last word shift. <laughs> what is going? Like, what is going? <laughs> who is Donna? Who is Donna? Uh, huh? I got yeah. yeah. Got, I don't know. Mean? A bunch of stuff about the uh, yeah. always. There's brave Hitler. Yeah. Single. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, so I Something have no explanation for this either. I just, yeah, I thought this was weird. So the Hitler would be calling someone else, right, that's not, mm -hmm. not on this team. Right, yeah, yeah. Which that's, is ironic, but that yeah. Is a, right. yeah, okay. Yeah. That's a tool. Why that's they definitely a, God. an argumentative <laughs> tool. Godwin, Godwin, right? What is it, Godwin's law? Yeah. At some point every discussion turns into someone calling someone a Nazi. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't remember whose law that is, but yeah. that sounds right. Okay, so keep moving forward. Um, I two minutes. two minutes. That's a good time for this slide. Uh, so I would like to something that I haven't done seems kind of an obvious next maneuver is to just look at where in the network the actual geolocated accounts are, um, and so that can tell me a little bit more about where this network is really about Puerto Rico and where other stuff is just kind of seeping in from other things. Yeah, are you using the full geo thing. Yes. Everything. Yes. The so full square stuff. You know, like more than just long. Lat. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 This is just long lat. Yeah. It's, it's a real pain, but there is the four square kind of thing. Like I four. don't. I don't know how to use that. What is that? So where people just like on Instagram or whatever, they just put Puerto, you know, just say Puerto Rico oh, or California. Yeah. Right. You know, you get to scope, it, which is still really useful. We just yeah, have to harness yeah. that, and and because of it, actually. 
we used to get one percent of tweets would be due that, that are lat line. Uh -huh. and now it's much smaller because uh, it's turned into a play, you know a place or a yeah. bigger place. Okay. I'm curious about but you that's something to get hold of. You can force your lo your stated location mm -hmm. to be somewhere that it's not. Absolutely, people can. Right, but I, I think the geolocation. We're missing in our database. The geolocation is legit though. This phone is here, right? Um, yes, but you miss a lot the because I'm not, right. for some really reason. I'm not sure. I yeah, I'm not sure. That. Sure. We're talking about how people use Twitter. What's that? Make sure you get that long in the right direction. Very important point. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. You know and that it's different. It's one way, not one in different places. Okay. Ten percent. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I, I, I triple checked that one. But, yep, yeah, so I'd like to generate a geospatial or a spatiotemporal representation of information volume just because I like maps. That's something that would be good to do. Yeah, maps tell stories. And then the ultimate goal for this whole thing is really determine which nodes would be optimal starting points for new information. So if we want everyone to know where to get generators. Where do we drop these bits of information in the network if we don't have access to just everywhere? So that's something. Also, your idea goes here. Um, and you can ask more questions if you still have them. But yeah, that's, that's everything that I had right now. So. Okay, great. So I think keep asking Ben questions. We, we have to move into the next thing, which starts at 10 past, which is the ethics of data science and the fact that there are none. <laughs> <laughs> All right.